the campaign. Well, sitting, no, sitting here I, trying I, to make the argument. For you. It could be a loser for you too. Though, trying to make, it, trying it, to make the it, argument. No, you trying to make the case that somehow the, <laughs> the, the, the Democrats are more fascist than the Republicans. The, the, the fascism cuts across this the board. Is, but, that, but that's no, not no, how you say it, though. You say it's only Donald Trump. You don't say it cuts oh, across no, the board. No, no, you no, call no, Joe no, Biden milk toast, and you call I Donald Trump a fascist. So you're not saying Donald Joe Biden is a fascist, really? I said the fascist dimensions to the to the Biden project. You're absolutely right. It's like you're campaigning for Joe Biden almost when you're doing this. Oh, that's what no, it sounds that, like. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But that's what it's, I'm not saying you are doing that. I'm saying that's what it sounds that's, like. What it sounds like to you. That's what it sounds like okay. to you. And you got a right to be wrong. You got a right to be right. It sounds like to you. But it doesn't sound like that to a whole host of others at all. So about, not okay. at all. All right. Again, I'm it's saying all. this out of love for you because I do I have deep love it. for you. I, I have deep it. respect for you. And we agree on almost everything except the message of your campaign, right? That's the only thing. I, I, I would hope it would uh, become even more focal. Let me just put it this way. But, but, but are you suggesting that the message should be that Biden is a greater fascist than Trump? Is no, that what you're saying? I, no I, I'm not saying that you should talk about fascism or any of that stuff. I think you should. No, try, fascism is very real. I think you, don't you should, think fascism is real in the country. It's We're living in it. We're living in fascism. But I'm talking about escalating in terms of intensity. You, you know, it has since, since Biden became president. It certainly has escalated in intensity. They've censored everybody. They've crushed unions. They've tried. They've started another war. And now they're saber rattling with two nuclear powers. I don't know how what they're, they're, well, I don't know how worse it could get. And by the way, he still hasn't let people out of prison. He still hasn't given student loans. He's still denying us health care. He doesn't. He's an enemy of the worker and a tool of military industrial complex in Wall Street. There's no bigger fascist in the country than Joe Biden. The reason why black around people are locked up again isn't because of Trump. It's because of brother Biden. And Joe Biden is a, is proud of that. He brags about that. He brags about the crime bill, and he will never apologize for it. So I'm just letting you know that I really want your campaign to pick up traction. This is the opposite way to do it. Who's ever advising you sounds like an infiltrator. Oh, but, but but why do you keep saying advise? I'm thinking for myself, brother. I'm a okay. Free I don't mean to insult you. That's not. Even, not just advising. Okay. I don't, I don't ask who's advising. Shit got kind of heated here. I'm, I gotta get a new mic. I'm using this damn headset. Anyways, so. I watched the debate. It should have been an interview, but it was more of an ended up being a debate, which is, you know, it is what it is between um, Jimmy Dorn and Cornel West. I guess the slammer time. I don't subscribe to, obviously, if you follow the channel enough to any of these people's politics. I do respect Cornel West as a black intellectual in our community. Um, I totally dislike when I watched the last election when the bitch ass white liberals like Bill Maher and others chastise him and criticize him and talk down to him like he was a little boy or something because he wouldn't tap dance for Hillary Clinton and like lock and step entire black media did the same thing because he was very critical of Barack Obama I respect him for that he was one of the few him and Travis Smiley who clearly their careers were hurt or bothered by and their legacies were hurt by them actually keeping their foot on brother Barack Obama's neck so to speak they minimized it too. He just didn't get an invite, which he should have got the invite because he was tap dancing for your campaign and got people to vote for you, period. But I understand how politics works. And that's the point of what I'm seeing in this interview is that, of course, Jimmy is correct that they should have never did this shit on camera. It should have been off camera because even in the beginning of the video, the way he's explaining his monologue is like, yo, this is what I'm here for. I'm not attacking you. I'm not, you know, disrespecting you but i'm trying to push you on how to run your campaign and make it more effectively more, more effective and again the way that sounded was kind of bitch ass white liberalist you know not as bad as what bill maher was doing to colonel west but i'm saying i can understand that perception of this white progressive trying to tell this black man how to run his campaign but anyways after listening to it because i heard some people also complain about the video and talk about it whatever i'm like let me go see what this is about don't get it twisted. I don't subscribe to none of these leftist progressives ideology, whatever. But I do love watching that progressives and leftists infighting. I just love it. That shit is so entertaining. It is so entertaining just watching them just fall apart, the squad and how they all, all cons and, and and they you know did not do any of the stuff that they said they were gonna do. AOC and that whole bunch. Um, watching you know, Bernie bitch out and, and bend the knee and has the, the you know his supporters become frustrated with him. I just watched the Kyle Kalinske and Brianna Joy Gray and uh, Crystal Ball, aka Eminem and Kate Milton. You know they was going at her because she is no not going to support Biden in the, in the, in the election because Trump is the boogeyman. Which that's the whole point of what I think Jimmy Dorn was saying. Um. 
there's certain phrases and things you say as a president. If you're running for president, you want to win, you can't do. It's just that fact. You might be should love to hear somebody. It might get you off because he talk about white supremacy every video, and that gets you off because you can't go a day without hearing that. But you're not gonna win an election doing that. Period. Like it just is what it is. When Cornell West, because he did this in an interview earlier on, just making the point that was Jimmy Dore saying, okay, it's not just one party, it's both parties, but the way you're framing it is helping Joe Biden because you're basically telling people, okay, go vote for him over Trump because he's a lesser of two evils. But when you look at policy and you look at the condition that we're in in the country, you can't really say that, right? You can't. And that's what they'll do. They'll put some abstract situation, some identity politics. And I know that that phrase is bullshit because there's identity politics on both sides. Soccer moms is specifically speaking to identity. White working class, they don't say that, but they say blue collar workers, whatever, because that's the majority of the country, you know, white men. That's identity politics. But when you invoke that, I'm going to invoke LBGT or trans this and that, you know. When the funny thing is, I know. Politically, Joe Biden probably has done more against that community, that group, when before we became popular to support that, right? Because they didn't support it until the second administration of Barack Obama when he needed the votes, he wanted to win. And the gays was like, yo, if you don't tap dance for us, we're not giving you no money. And his policies changed, and all of them changed after that. Prior to that, they was all in one standard agreement. We agree with all three Abrahamic religions when it comes to that shit. We don't co-sign that. And, but then when it came politically convenient for Barack Obama to do it, and now they all can do it as part of the platform now. But when you do stuff like that, you're not going to win. And I think Jimmy Dore is correct. It's people, he, Cornel West is talking about male supremacy, not just white supremacy, but male supremacy. He's just throwing all these things out there, and it's just like slowly people are hearing these different pockets, and they may interpret them differently than the way you mean it. But it is what it is, and they're not going to support your campaign because it's just, you just shut people off. I don't believe in the whole that's divisive, whatever. If you say it and you feel it, it is what it is. And people feel offended about it, oh well. But you're trying to win an election here. That's the whole point. It's like, as much as criticism I give Barack Obama, and I understand, there's still things I understand he could not do politically. Like, he could not come out and embrace being biracial, which I thought he should have. But I understand politically why he did not do that, right? He, um,. Even though he probably did support gay marriage, and again, in the beginning, here him Sinclair, his oh, boyfriend allegedly, you know, he could have supported that personally because he did when he ran in the Senate in the beginning. He supported it when he was in Chicago. So, um, obviously, he could have been had it on his platform, but he couldn't do that and win as the president of the United States. So he didn't. So like, it's, there, it's certain things you cannot dare do or say. A lot of people probably agree with Reverend Wright and goddamn America, but yeah, the little. Um, Planet of the Apes lady, um, Valerie Jarrett, that was her job. Like, she was there to buffer. She was there to cock block black people from having access to Obama and him getting his, his looking too black and black, even though he had no agenda for black people and he said that from the exception. But her job was there to separate that. Her job was to tell Bra, you, know, you got to drop your pastor of 30, 20 something, 30 years because, you know, it's not a good look for you. And that's, funny thing is, that's the one time that the left and the right media. We're on Obama's ass with that Reverend Wright situation. So politically, I understand why he had to separate himself from him, right? He had to kick Jim. Van Jones, did this first step back on that shit with Trump. But imagine if Obama had balls, the ones that Jesse Jackson wanted to cut off because he was talking down to black people, um, and kept Van Jones on. Maybe he could have been on that with Barack Obama and did the mass incarceration thing and fix it and address it. But Van Jones had some communist shit in his background, and when he was wearing his little kufi and whatnot. And them white liberals and conservatives were uncomfortable with that, and he had to get him out of his administration. I say all that to say is like, if you want to win, because that's the whole goal is to win, right? Like, yeah, you can put your point across. Yeah, it might, again, you might want to hear them saying those things, but a lot of those things in the grand scheme of things aren't important to a lot of people, and it turns people off to say those things. And from what I see from watching. So far, 15 minutes of this video, that's what Jimmy Dore is telling him. He's like, yo, you got to stop saying the fascism thing. For one, we're already living in that space right now. And two, Donald Trump, as much as you can, there's a bunch of folks that you can get him on and call him on, whatever. But you can't, you're ignoring the pandemic we just had where people got fired from their jobs because they wouldn't take an experimental vaccine. 
that didn't stop the spread, that didn't stop infections. Um, they forced a mask mandate that they can say two, three years later, it didn't do nothing. Cloth masks don't work. Even the M95s, there's other bacteria and things that people are getting because of that. They shut down schools. There's a learning loss gap for kids, especially. And when white kids get, you know, white America gets the cold, black kids get the flu. How far back is these kids who didn't been out of school for the last two years and they going back and they pass anyways to go to the next grade and they should, probably shouldn't have. So I'm saying, the fascism is already here, right? It was the Obama administration that went after whistleblowers. How the little he, she, manling chick, he the one that was a traitor and stole m information from the government and gave it to a foreign journalist, but Julian Assange is the one that our government planned to kill. Like, the CIA and them boys was about to go get him and kill him. <laughs> Not the motherfucker who stole it. The dude who stole it got a free sex change on the taxpayer's dime, and he out cool, and he's still talking his shit. But the person who published the information is rotting away in some jail somewhere. And none of the presidents have pardoned him yet. Because, you know, he's not an American. He didn't trade us. He pu pushed out public information that the fuck shit that our government was doing. And he's the one that's going to be held penalized for it. And not the person who actually stole the information. And then after the dude got pardoned by Obama, he still was talking shit about Obama, which I understand because Obama was the administration that said, no, we're going after whistleblowers. So all those movies you watch, especially I was watching some TV show that was in uh, BBC in, in Britain, and it was pretty good. It was like same situation, people whistleblowing, ex exposing shit, going to the, giving it to the newspaper person, he lost his job, whatever. But you watch those things, you think, oh, that, that won't happen here, but our president at the time said, "Now nah, we going after the whistleblowers when they take government information and they give it to the public of the dirt and the grimy shit that we've done. But yeah, I think that what from what I've seen so far in video, I haven't, again, the tone of it, and he's, uh, maybe because his delivery is what it is and he was frustrated that Cornell West can't see it. But when you're saying that Trump is this boogie evil man, which is what the same thing the Democrats are doing, right? They're not delivering any type of substance. They're not delivering any of the liberal or progressive policies that y'all claim y'all desire. But they can focus on and what Cornell West did, which I didn't like. He goes, well, what about LBGT? Even though, again, in real life, I'm sure Trump don't care about that. In real life, Trump is a New York liberal. I don't even support, I don't even really think I rock with him on guns. I rock with his Supreme Court picks choices that help do what I need it done for him personally I don't trust him on guns because he's a new he probably don't subscribe to that whatever but it's funny how Trump got uh, attacked by the quote unquote quote, quote, deep state because he wouldn't do more proxy wars and do the same bullshit that Joe Biden's doing and that's the point that um, Jimmy Dorn is making we're already in fascism we already have the government and the state colluding FBI telling Facebook and Twitter, don't let people post this, don't let people post that, delete that stat, put a warning on this. That's fascism. We're already here. And then Cornell West wants to do this magical flip-flop thing where he goes, well, no, there's levels to this shit, uh, fascism. Like, I I don't, I think Joe Biden's fascism is worse than Jimmy Dorn correctly points out. Like, yo, mass incarceration is not Trump's fault. It's Biden's. Um, the reason why y'all can't write off your student loan debt shit, he's not the only person that participated in it, but he was a part of it. He was one of the higher ranking senators who did that shit where you can't write off your student loan debt as bankruptcy. He did it. He should fix it, right? He was a part of that. He should fix it. He should address it. It's his way of making amends. Um... Oh, I got a text. Um, but that's the thing I never understood with between people were making arguments between Trump and Hillary. Out of all the personal shit that Trump did that was wrong or fucked up, let's just say Central Park Five. Trump was wrong. I don't think he was wrong in writing the ad. I don't think he was wrong in what he did. I think he was wrong by not admitting he was wrong when he when it was proven that those guys were not guilty and they were let out of jail. I think that's. His mistake is not saying, oh, my bad, the system worked, and blah, blah, blah. That's where I think he's wrong. But him doing stuff in the beginning, uh, that's what you're supposed to do. You have a community, you want to protect it, whatever. But you can't compare that to Hillary Clinton, who's attached to her husband, who support his policies, um, and the whole super predator marks. 
all the nigga crats want to say, well, she wasn't president. It wasn't her fault. Yet, you can't take away Hillary Clinton's whole super predator moment and separate that from her husband the same way when Ronald Reagan extended Nixon's war on drugs and he brought his white wife out and sat on the couch. <laughs> Vlad, that was probably Vlad's couch and talked about the uh, war on drugs because their kids were crackheads or cokeheads. And their kids were uh, messed up on drugs. I use same with Biden's. His son is messed up on drugs and crack. Yet he's put some pushes some policy that hurt us. Although <laughs> white politicians' kids get messed up on drugs, somehow it get us jammed up and locked up more than anybody. But case in point, though, you can't separate Hillary from Bill Clinton for what she did. She stood by her man, whatever. She did what she did politically. You can say what you want. But she was a part of that system. The same way I can't separate Nancy Reagan. She ain't writing no law. She ain't vote veto nothing. She ain't pass nothing. But she sat on that couch to support her husband and she helped push the American people into supporting this policy that ended up hurting the black community even more. But yeah, I think Cornell West does lose me when he does um, the whole LBGT, transgender, this and that. Talk about white supremacy all day. Because uh, none of that stuff is tangible. None of that stuff is going to get to the heart of where the most people are at. They're in the middle. You want progressives already let you know under the whole Bernie situation, we're not addressing race. They're just not. Like, okay, y'all allies, so called allies, as Dr. King says, you know, that would be our biggest threat is the white moderate liberal, right? The whole Joe Biden's and all them. They've already said that they're not doing reparations. They're not doing things that um, specifically target black people. They want the things to be this whole kumbaya. Even though I know we understand we got specific needs that need to be touched in a certain way because they were systematically done. Well, your white liberal friends don't care about that. <laughs> the white progressive friends don't care about that. Your white leftist friends don't care about that. Despite the leftists being the ones who really supposed to care about all those things. They don't care. They're not supporting it. They're not rocking with it. They've showed you that. They've told you that. I don't know how many times. The girl who's being ghetto on the Breakfast Club interviewing Vivek, she was with Bernie's campaign and had to sue for racial discrimination, right? And she got paid. That's why she's not rocking with him no more. But Bernie told you, I don't do the identity positive things. I'm not doing it. And that's what Jimmy Dorn is trying to tell him that when you do that, it, if you do do that, it's gonna, it's just taken away from your campaign and your messaging. And if you really want to win, these are things you should stop, stop doing. Again, white dude telling me that, I get it, how the opposite of that, how it looks. But I don't think Jimmy in this situation is being, has ill intentions or ill motives. I think he's still, truly sincere and saying, yo, this is what it looks like when you do that. And I agree when he keeps saying, Trump, Biden is milk toast, but when I look at the last 40 years of Biden, Biden's policies and things he's voted for, I can't call him milk toast. I just listened to Karen Hunter, another nigga crat, who's saying, uh, oh, she mentioned Gaddafi, because she's doing a whole typical tap dance, and I don't, we not vote in third party. She had this man on her show, Cornel West, and did the same thing to him that the entire liberal media is doing, white liberal media, and black, because they want him out of the way. They think he's going to um, affect Joe Biden's chances of winning, or whatever. Even though technically that's not how this works, um, the person who votes third party are generally the people who would have never voted for a Democrat or Republican in the, in the first place. Instead of blaming the third party or person for losing this many votes or that many votes from there, you should be going after the 100 million people who don't vote at all. That's your fault if you can't gather that and get them. For whatever reason, Democrats feel like they are owed those votes and they belong to them, and you shouldn't run because you take like that's not. I just don't understand that logic. You have to win. You have to go get the votes. You have to get to persuade people. They blame like the third party voters in Bush versus Gore, but it was like I think almost 200,000 Democrat registered Democrats who voted for Bush in Florida. 200,000. So instead of being mad at the third partiers who voted for, I think it was Ralph Nader or whatever, you should have been mad at the 300,000, 200,000 Democrats who voted for George W. Bush. Get the people that's in your own party that's thinking about hopping the fence or leaving or they going to sit out this one for this uh, administration or whatever. They want to try something different because they think what you're doing is not working. But yeah, I, I'm not mad at the interview so far that I've seen. 
and I'm sure it gets a little spicy as I continue to go on. I don't want to go play by play because it's long. But yeah, I for just the first 15 minutes of what he's saying, the things that Cornell West keeps bringing up, and I I hear people all the time, like even more independent people, like what is Cornell West talking about male supremacy now? What is he talking about alphabet LBGT stuff? Like that's why are you incorporating this all inclusive narrative? And that's what he's always done though. That's why I've never rocked with his pen because all all he's doing is some DIE stuff where. In essence, that's where black people get. You bring all these other groups and all these other identities into this conversation, and that just means the pie is even smaller and smaller for black people, and to the point where they just get completely ignored, and everybody else is making political gains and getting things they want, and black people are still stuck where they were in the beginning, by co-opting or by not, uh, by you know, kumbaya and letting everybody tag along off the racial issues, which America does not want to address on either party. Neither party wants to address it. Stop saying that Biden is milk toast and this and none that. He's a, he's a warmonger. He's fucking up the game with this situation in Ukraine. He gave him all that bread. It was disrespectful for him. We criticized Bush for Hurricane Katrina and what he did with that, and rightfully so. But he's somehow getting a pass in the media from what happened in um, Hawaii. Right? Trump got smoked for what happened in Puerto Rico with the storm and all that. But y'all giving Biden a pass for what's going on in Hawaii $700 and their house is there what you gonna do with $700 and your house is gone <laughs> then you got Oprah and bitch ass uh, you got uh, what is it, uh, the actor he up there you got a billionaire and uh, close to a billionaire net worth of movie making at least um, talking about we gonna we're gonna pledge to give this money but we're pledging to give this money with your money. Like, we're not going to go out of our pocket and help these people out and call a bunch of our billionaire, millionaire friends to come help these people out. We're going to put that on the American people. Fuck that. Y'all, is enough of y'all wealth and y'all one percenters to fix whatever situation is going on in Hawaii. You don't need the rest of the people to do that and participate in that. If Joe Biden only gave $700 to each person that's affected by that situation, you're supposed to step together to come in and fix the rest and stop bugging other people dealing with inflation and all the other stuff. But that's my video. I'm at 20 minutes. That's just my video. Um, I ain't mad so far. I haven't seen anything. If I do continue to watch and see something that I didn't like or feel, I'll, I'll address it. Again, I, I understand. I respect the leftists and progressives who hold their party accountable. However, I'm not naive to the grift that's going on like the Tim Pools and all the other so-called liberals and leftists who've come center right or they've switched up a little bit because there's a market for doing that. I get that. It's no different than the, the black folks who tap dance for the right. But there's just money involved in this shit and the game has just changed. But Jimmy Dore has been being consistent in his arguments. Um, stop saying that Joe Biden is not, is, is like both parties are trash. I can respect anybody saying that. But Cornel West is all his intellect, all his intelligence to say, oh no, but Biden a little bit better but you can't ignore the policies over his whole career in office it's nothing to trump the shit that hillary is attached to with her husband bill and the shit that Joe biden has done in the last 40 years of politics it's nothing compared to what trump has done or could do it's just not it's intellectually dishonest to say so but yet that's the narrative that cornell west is portraying when he's talking about joe biden is milk toast no he's more than milk toast He's about to get us in World War III with, it, with some nukes. Well, that's what I was saying about Karen Hunter, though. Karen Hunter was just talking about Gaddafi and how he, you know, was trying to unify Africa. And then out of nowhere, he got killed and sodomized. But you voted for the bitch who, who overseen that, Hillary Clinton. You voted for the president, Barack Obama, who overseen that. And yet, you bring that up, but it was their administration, their policy. Trump didn't do that. Bullets, banks, bombs, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, seven countries in seven years. Obama finished what Bush started. And y'all don't criticize him for that. But y'all bring up some other abstract thing to distract from that, like some LBGT or some white supremacy stuff that ain't ever going to get addressed policy-wise in this country. It's just not, not in our lifetimes. Um, you'll, talk, you'll bring up climate change, some stuff like that that the average person ain't really thinking about like that. Instead of, yo, inflation is too high, we can't buy houses, um, you're calling Trump a fascist, but Joe Biden just shut down a railroad strike. Yeah, talking about Republicans in there, in there.
you're talking oh, I'm back Mike died but you're talking about Republicans and they're um, busting up of unions or whatever but Joe Biden shut down an entire strike that would have changed the trajectory of everything like all oh, shit was gonna break loose hell you, you talk about the truck drivers stop driving if the railroad people which is the alternative which is like more people things are moved by railroad that would have shut down the entire country and Joe Biden administration stopped that shit he stopped an entire strike and it was like, nah, we're not doing that. How how is that not fascism? Like the the UPS guys got their bread and got what they wanted. They strike didn't get shut down. Some of the Amazon people got their shit. The Starbucks people got their shit, even though there's no Starbucks open no more. And it was just be closing at like four or three o'clock, even though the website be saying they open. I don't go there, but I just you trying to meet a chick somewhere and you be like, oh, since the pandemic things be closing early and shit. And but it'd be saying it's open, it's not. But anyways, <laughs> Those places, companies got to do their shit, but the one that would have really mattered, that would have shut shit down, and the UPS would have shut shit down too, obviously. But there's other competition that would have just picked up, and the mail and other companies would have just, Amazon, other companies would have just took that loss. It would have hurt temporarily, but this shit would have been bad. But their shit got to go through, and they got to get their bread. The railroad tractor didn't. They, they didn't even ask for bread. They wanted time off. They wanted to be able to rest between shifts. They wanted simple shit. They wanted the technology to be used that can stop the trains from getting derailed. Like, shit that matters. They weren't even asking for money. Um, But yeah, that's my video. I'm not mad at Jimmy Dorn for his video with Cornel West. I agree with those things that you're saying as a politician that you're not, it's just not going to help your campaign. Again, the people who cheerlead in the back for you saying it, they don't want you to win. Because you gotta say, I know why he can't say those things. Because it'll hurt his campaign. I, as much again, as much as you, Obama didn't do shit and all that, I understand why some of the things he just didn't do. Because it would affect his politics. That's how this shit works. It's not just about, like, it's, it's different. It ain't just about point A, point B. There's a lot of variables you gotta take account for when you're trying to run for president. And Cornel West clearly isn't about doing that and some people might like that they feel it's real and authentic but he's not gonna win doing that it is what it is acknowledge that we are in a fascist situation right now acknowledge that big tech has helped this specific administration acknowledge that barack obama's administration went after whistleblowers and put them in jail locked them up through the way the key right the other dude is still in russia right now because he can't come back to america um eric snowden Julian Shine is right away in the prison. That that's some fashion shit. <laughs> Especially when it was it's like it was covering up some bullshit that we did do in our government. I'm out.